Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review of a long lost, discontinued unicorn Tom Ford private blend called Italian Cypress. And you can see my good friend Anuj sent me this decant and I have worn the hell out of it in the last week, given it multiple full wears, worn it to bed multiple times, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've been sort of uh, immersing myself lately in fragrances, wearing them multiple times back to back, which normally I sort of had a rule where I wouldn't wear the same fragrance back to back. I would, you know, wear something different the next day. But lately I've just been in this mood, I guess, to wear the same thing, probably because I know I'm trying to do these full reviews and I really want to sort of really get to know the fragrance before I get on here and start spouting off at the mouth. So um, this fragrance came out in 2008. And before we get started, I have to say, Thank you to my good friend Anuj from Enchante Perfumes. He sent me a, you can go check out my uh, video. It was a gift from Anuj and, excuse me, he sent me some amazing full bottles. And in those full bottles was this decant of Tom Ford's Italian Cypress. So if you don't know Anuj, you're probably new to my channel because so much of my vintage collection that you see came from him. Um, he is an amazing guy. Go watch my um unboxing that I did recently from uh, the package that he sent me out of the goodness of his heart because he knew I was a little bit down and he just wanted to sort of send me a pick-me-up. He didn't charge me for any of them. Very, very kind and it was a gift. Um, so very, very kind of him. Um, but this is one of the, uh, you know, decants that came in that package, Italian Cypress. And I don't own a bottle of this because it's been very hard to find. And we'll talk a little bit about price at the end of the, of the video. Um, but needless to say, this is a fragrance that is very near and dear to Tom Ford himself, his heart, and there's a reason for that. And and actually, if you go back through some of my old videos, you'll notice that I've done multiple series, and one of the series I ended up doing was a series called Fragrance Connections. And in the Fragrance Connection series, the whole idea is I talk about fragrances that, in my mind, even if they came out years or decades apart, they have some sort of connection to each other, right? And this fragrance is connected to three other perfumes. Um, one of them I have a review on the channel, you can go check out. Two of them I plan on reviewing very soon. So the first one, and the most important one I think to, to this fragrance in general, and probably Tom Ford's rise to where he ended up at, period, selling his brand to Estee Lauder and all the stuff that ended up happening, you know, uh, going out on his own and founding his brand, but also being the creative director and, you know, sort of brains behind YSL and Gucci and all that stuff came from Roy uh, Halston. Roy Halston Frowick, who uh, created Halston Z14 back in um, the mid 70s, 76, I believe. And so I've got actually two bottles of Z14. I love the stuff so much. I have a, interestingly enough, I have a splash that actually says Made in France. I've never seen a Made in France um version of z14 you can tell it's older because it's a splash they stopped making splashes long ago and they started doing the ones with the built-in atomizers um but you know halston is a um is an american brand and an american designer and so most of the halston fragrances say new york new york you know that's just how they how how i've seen all of his fragrances have this new york new york sort of um you know, verbiage down below. There's Halston fragrances. I think there's one that says um, maybe fine fragrances or something. And then the more modern ones say EA, Elizabeth Arden. Um, and so there's multiple iterations. If you can find the older Halston fragrances, Inc., um, that's probably the one that I would recommend to go with. But um, like this particular one here, you can see it just says Z14. Oh, it says Parfums Halston. Yeah, so, you know, th those are the older iterations. If you can find some of these, it's truer to what I think it was really meant to be because this is a fragrance that has gone through some reformulations. But if I was doing a connection series with Italian Cypress, it would definitely be Z14, would be in that little bubble, if you will. And also, later on, in the early 90s, um, Valentino came out with a fragrance called Vendetta Pour Homme. And Vendetta Pour Homme is sort of like a boozy, um, there's a little bit of bay rum in here. So it's like a boozy take on Halston Z14. And um, they, they did change some things in here. There's some Neroli and some lavender, which, you know, you don't get very much lavender in uh, Italian Cypress. 
or even uh, Z14, if there is any lavender, maybe there's just the tiniest bit, but it's not listed in the note listing. So they've added a little bit of lavender, but it has that Z14. You can tell this is heavily inspired by Halston Z14. So if I was doing a connection series, let's say, I would have Italian Cypress, Z14, Vendetta Pour Homme, and finally, the newest addition to the list would be Apex by the House of Roja Parfums that came out last year. And you know, Roja loves taking these sort of vintage style fragrances and modernizing it. And I actually have a review on the channel of Apex. So if you want to sort of get my thoughts, go watch my review of Apex. It's it's from the um, Eau, Eau de Parfum, not the Pure Parfum. I've never smelled the Pure Parfum. But um, but yes, I, I enjoyed Apex, but I, I said I wouldn't buy it because I already had, you know, Z14 and Vendetta. So now we're testing um, Italian Cypress. So let me sort of give you my thoughts. So like I said, to me, this is a modern day Z14. There's just no getting around it. But there is more to the story because if you know Tom Ford, you know that Roy uh, Halston Frauwick, which by the way, there is a uh, documentary on YouTube. I think you can find it on YouTube, but uh, you might have to look around the internet. But there's a documentary on Halston on um, the life of Roy Halston Frowick that is absolutely amazing. It's only like an hour long. I would urge you to, to watch that if you get a chance. It goes into some of his backstory and all that good stuff. Fantastic documentary. Um, but Roy Halston Frowick was sort of Tom Ford's icon. Okay, so when Tom Ford was in, was in the prime uh, of his life in the 70s, he was going out and, and partying as a younger man. You know, it was, it was Halston that really inspired Tom Ford. Tom Ford wanted to be Roy Halston Frowick. In fact, he wanted it so much that he actually, as he got, whenever he got rich and came to fame, he ended up purchasing Roy's house. Literally, the house um, in New York where, where he lives is Roy's old house. Um, and it's, it's very interesting, you know, how some of this all comes together. But, you know, Tom Ford purchasing his old house uh, and just the impact that Halston had on a young Tom Ford, I don't think can be understated. And so this fragrance, Italian Cypress, um, if you listen to many of the reviewers sort of talk about this fragrance, you, you hear some repetitive themes. Oh, they don't think it's worth the price. You know, it doesn't have the complexity to be in a private blend. But you have to remember, this fragrance is really something that's special to the heart of Tom Ford himself. And I think that cannot be underestimated here. So you have to know a little bit of fragrance history, I think, to really appreciate Italian Cypress in the full scope of what it is and what it's trying to do. Now, so... Here's the thing, the other thing I have to say is that if you are under 40 years old, you would probably say or assume that it would be easy to say Tom Ford with his success far surpassed his icon, um, Halston, right? You would think that Tom Ford selling his business to Estee Lauder for $2.8 billion or whatever it ended up coming to and the huge success that Tom Ford is right now, just the fashion icon that Tom Ford is, he had to have surpassed Halston. No one talks about Halston anymore. Halston is a bygone brand in, in many uh, sense of the word. Uh, you know, this is a fragrance that you would find at like TJ Maxx for 10 or 20 bucks and no one wanted it. And so many people considered it to be a cheap fragrance, but I don't think it's a cheap fragrance. I think it's an amazing composition. And now that it's discontinued, and there's a ton of it floating around out there. So price, it's never going to be a unicorn or anything like that because it was created for so long. But vintage fragrance lovers, I think, will, will start to appreciate it more and more now that it officially has been discontinued. Um, and I think the house in general, it's, it's easy to forget just how popular Halston was because one thing that you have to remember is that um, people on, let's say, 40 and above, okay, people on the back half of their life, they probably remember Halston in the go-go party days of the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, it was Halston that was famous for always being at Studio 54. And it was Halston that made Jackie Kennedy's hat for the inauguration. It was Halston that did all of these amazing things that just made him one of the most, if not the most iconic American designer. And, you know, when you went to the nightclubs in the 70s and 80s, I've actually had um, uh, Al Manzano on the channel. If you know Al, he's absolutely amazing. Uh, he's a he's a good friend of mine, but he came on the channel and said, Ramsey, in the eight, 70s and 80s, the nightclubs didn't smell like Antaeus, or they didn't smell like Bellamy, or they didn't smell like Polo Green. You know what they smelled like? They smelled like Halston. They smelled like Z14. 
This is what everyone wore when they went to the discotheques and danced and stuff like that. And so it's easy as a younger man, I'm 38 years old, it's easy as a younger man to look at this and say, well, Tom Ford, with his popularity today, far surpassed his icon, um, Halston. But if you go back to the 70s and 80s, it's easy to sort of overlook just what a huge name Halston was. So this really, I think, impacted Tom Ford is the way that I look at it. It really impacted him as a younger man. And he truly was his icon. He wanted to be Roy Halston. And um, so the first thing you should understand um, about this fragrance, and, and, and it was so impactful that it wasn't just Tom Ford. We also have, I mentioned earlier, Roja Dove, who made his Apex um, fragrance that sort of pays homage to one of the OG influencers, right? So, so the first thing that you should understand is when you smell Halston, when you smell, um, now I'm saying Halston, uh, I almost said Halston Italian Cypress. When you smell Tom Ford's Italian Cypress for the very first time, you have to keep in mind that this is a take on a greeter, excuse me, a greener type scent, okay? So when you first smell it, it's going to open up very green, and it's actually going to be even greener than Z14 um, because there's a huge slug of galbanum, and there's a huge slug of cypress in Italian cypress. So it does do exactly what it says on the tin. And the interesting thing about the Italian part of it, so Italian cypress, right? What do you think of when you think of Italian fragrances? Well, many Italian fragrances, I would say, you think about having this big, huge citrus opening. And interestingly enough, this fragrance does not have that. There are some citruses when you first spray. So one thing that you'll notice is there's bergamot, and there's mandarin orange. And those two fragrances are somewhat light. Uh, those two ingredients, when you, when you smell the fragrance for the very first time, the citruses are not sort of what pop into your brain the very first thing that you smell. Um, but what you will notice is that somehow they were able to make those citruses really last hours and hours into the dry down, long after you would uh, expect them to have dissipated. You can still sort of smell the mandarin orange and the bergamot, but it's in the background. It really plays this, um, you know, almost this role of smoothing everything out, if you will. It, it takes the sandpaper and just smooths it all out. Um, and, and so what you really get is, here's, here's the experiment, if you, wanna, if you want my opinion of how Italian cypress smells. So if you close your eyes and imagine you're smelling a cypress tree but not just in summer like it is now in Texas. Imagine it being in winter and it's powdered with snow. So it snowed the night before and the powdered snow is still sitting on the thistles of the tree, okay? And imagine that you sort of have your best Canadian goose jacket on, right? So you're not cold, you're, you're somewhat toasty and warm. And every time you inhale that cold winter air, you get this sort of medicinal, herbal, very dry, green, almost like this aromatherapy smell, almost like you've, um, um, you've put some, uh, aromatherapy, uh, you know, drops into one of those, uh, atomizers, into one of those, um, you know, humidifiers that shoots up into the air and, and humidifies your, your, your workspace or your room or whatever it is, but with a little bit of a herbal, medicinal, dry, green type smell, almost this medicinal type smell. That's how cypress smells to me. And that's what you get in the opening of Italian cypress with that mandarin orange and bergamot sort of playing in the background to round everything out. And the cypress has this very medicinal, almost energizing smell to it is the thing about it to me. It has a very um, almost like caffeinated, energizing like feel whenever you smell it. Um, it's It has a little bit of a piney, Somewhat, um, somewhat earthy, because imagine you're standing in the forest, right? You have your Canada goose jacket on, and you're standing in the forest, and you're smelling everything around you in the forest. So, of course, you're going to get some pine needles on the ground. You're going to get a little bit of that earthy, soily type smell, but it's a very invigorating smell. That's the main point that I want to put across. It's a medicinal, almost invigorating smell. And it's a very soothing smell as well, because again, you're think, think about healing. Think about um, the Red Cross icon, right? There's this healing aspect to Cypress that, and I think Cypress is actually a really underutilized note to me. So Tom Ford has sort of taken these characteristics, right? And he's amped them up even further because 
you know, I've sort of driven home the point that cypress has this medicinal, soothing, healing property, right? And so whenever you think about taking a deep breath in the cold winter air, what would amp up that cypress note even more? Peppermint, okay? And so this very minty, there is a little bit of peppermint and a little bit, it's almost like you get some a little bit of, of proper cooling peppermint, you know, when you put one of those mints in your mouth and, and whenever you breathe in, the air in the back of your throat has this sort of, um, not burning sensation, but uh, it's a very brisk sensation in the back of your throat and in your nostrils, right? It like opens everything up, right? Mixed with maybe like freshly plucked mint from the garden, right? And that's the that's sort of the two combinations, peppermint and mint in the opening. And it just really amps up and um, it further enhances the characteristics of the cypress, which is the star of this show, is the cypress. So the peppermint sort of recreates that cold air feeling while you're standing in the forest, breathing deep, that crisp sort of winter air, right? That's the feeling of the opening with the citruses in the background. That's the best way I can describe the opening. Just imagine this very sterilized, cold winter day. And the smell, uh, that, that literally is the smell of, of the opening to me. So one thing I should also mention is that even though I really love this smell, if you are a compliment bro, if you're someone who loves only modern day sweet designer type fragrances, um, this might be a smell that smells a little too mature for you because like I said, it's hearkening back to the 70s, um, to, to Z14, to Halston Z14. That, that is the genesis of this fragrance. And, and, you know, one of the fragrances I think that really made Tom Ford fall in love with perfumery. Um, and so um, it's, it's really something that I don't know if the younger crowd can truly get behind. This is a fragrance for someone... 35 and up, I would say, right? So if you're someone who dresses like I'm dressed today when you go to the office, then this is a fragrance that I think would fit perfect in that category. But if you're somebody who is looking for the attention, if you like to wear Eros or One Million or something like that, you may not like this at all. This may not be your thing. It might put you off a little bit um, if you're only into that modern vibe. Um, so you will get, like I said, some citruses in the top blast um, and they last longer than you would expect but they don't play a main role really what plays a main role is sort of that woody spicy green aspect of the, of the composition and the bit of sort of the spicy green carnation plays with the woody spicy uh, bit that I talked about earlier because there's this old school carnation note in Italian Cyprus and what's interesting is so if you love vintage perfumery you know that carnation was one of the mainstays of masculine perfumery. There was a carnation note in so many. It was known as like the masculine flower back in the day. I love carnation and things like Abbey Rouge. And there's so many vintage fragrances you could you could talk about that had that carnation note. Um, and here, it really gives it even more of that vintage throwback vibe. It feels much older than the 2008 release date, which is when it came out, of course. Um... And the carnation here has a slightly green, but mostly spicy side of it. Carnation can be very spicy to me. It can be a very spicy flower. And um, the spiciness of the carnation mixed with the green notes will sort of just continue to be thrown at you. So as the fragrance continues to dry, you get more and more of these sort of green um, notes. Like, for example, basil. You'll pick up basil. And that is a note in... Um, Halston Z14 as well, I believe. I think there's a note of basil in there in the top, and you will get that in Italian Cypress as well. As it continues to dry, it's sort of a textured, you know, herbal, soily, green, oak moss base as well. So it's like green with the cypress, green with the basil, green with the peppermint, green with the patchouli. There's a little bit of green, you know, patchouli in here, dank. Uh, imagine patchouli growing right next to this earthy textured oak moss, right? And that's sort of what the feet, what the dry down of the fragrance starts to smell like, is this very textured, soily oak moss growing not on the tree this time, but maybe like on around the base of the tree, you know, like on around the soil of the tree. There's some moss growing, and so you get that soily mossiness with the woodiness of the cypress. Cypress can also sometimes have a little bit of like a cedary 
type smell. And you do get this sort of generic woodiness from this composition as well. But the bass has a very brilliant labdanum note. And I will say this, um, you will pick up a slightly resinous quality to the fragrance from the very first, sm from the very first spray. It's slightly resinous. And if you really, really like that resinous side of, of this composition, or if you really, really like the resinous, you know, Z side of Z14 or, or Valentino uh, Vendetta Pour Homme, I will tell you to make sure you try and smell Roja's Apex because Roja loves using Cystus Labdanum and he's amped up the Labdanum note, which he usually does. And I usually like that. I'm a big fan of Labdanum. The labdanum note in Italian Cypress is done very, very well, but in Apex, it's in it's amped up even further. And so if that's one of your favorite parts of the fragrance, the, um, the labdanum, the very resinous, slightly leathery, um, not as much leather as you'll get in the old school Z14. This literally has a leather note in the base. Um, so you won't get that amount of leather, but you will get a little bit of this resinous, sticky, you know, it starts to lean slightly leathery with the labdanum. If you really like that, check out Roja's Apex, I will say. Um, so, now, the main difference between Tom Ford's Italian Cypress and Z14, to me, right off the bat, hands down, the biggest just, you know, Cliff Notes version of the difference is that Z14 has a huge, gigantic, uh, very in-your-face cinnamon note. And that cinnamon note is almost brash. It's almost, it's big and brash. And uh, it's almost in the style of something like a big red cinnamon, right? It's like a big red cinnamon note right in your face. And Tom Ford completely kicked that to the curb, completely took that cinnamon note out altogether. And what it does is it does something very interesting for Italian Cypress because it allows you to sort of see, to peer right into the heart of this very herbal green, almost tangy, right? Cypress. Um, it's almost like a tangy cypress. And so that's the, the ride. That's the composition of the fragrance to me. And I've really enjoyed wearing it. I've worn this, like I said, multiple times as my scent of the day. And I do reapply, hence the huge uh, dent that I put in this decant that Anuj sent me. And I've really got to enjoy it. But there are some downsides to Italian cypress. And the first thing is that this is a very linear fragrance, okay? So whenever you spray and wear Italian Cypress. It lasts a relatively long time. You'll get your eight hours, give or take. Um, but it's it's not something where, you know, when you're paying Tom Ford prices a lot of times, especially private blend prices, you want something that's going to take you on a journey. You want something that's going to start here and end here. And, and you can see the quality of the ingredients, but it's a very linear and a very familiar fragrance. Because like I said, there's multiple fragrances in my collection that um, resemble this. There is also a fragrance that I've done a review on that I don't have in my collection, Apex, that I had a sample of that um, I've smelled. So, so there's there's nothing in here that I think is going to wow anybody. Um, it's a it's a very familiar, but well done fragrance, but it doesn't change very much. There's not much transitions. There's you know some fragrance aficionados love when a fragrance starts here and ends here, you know, and goes all over the place. And this one doesn't. It's just a well made. Um, you know, somewhat mature, gentlemanly type fragrance, right? But it's very linear. And that may put some people off for the price. Now, let's talk a little bit about price. So when this came out, I think in 2008, I think 50 mils was like 250 bucks or something. And then it prices continued to go up, three, 350. Um, and, and then whenever it got discontinued, prices skyrocketed. So wearing this and really getting to know it, I don't know if I would even pay the $250, you know, original price for a 50 mil bottle, to be honest with you, because um, of, of what I already have in my collection. I definitely know I wouldn't pay the $1,000 or $1,500 that I see some bottles floating around on eBay nowadays for, you know, these people think they like hit the jackpot. They, they, they got the winning ticket because they got a bottle of Italian Cypress. It's, it's absolutely insane. So for me... You know, the price is, and that's just how it is with discontinued fragrances. Sometimes you have to find a deal. I'll find friends all the time that'll say, hey, you know, thanks for all the videos you do. I'll send you a bottle with 10, 20, 30 mils in it left and you can just have it. Or I'll pay them a little, a fair price, but I would never pay what is at, what's asked for this. Not when I have Z14 and Vendetta uh, Pour Homme in my collection. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's worth the price for me. 
because of the fact that I have these other fragrances in my collection. Now, if I did not, if I was a newcomer to the game and I didn't have Z14, I've never smelled it, and I didn't have Vendetta by Val Vendetta Pour Homme, um, and I've never smelled Roja's Apex, would I buy this at, you know, a reasonable price, 100, 200 bucks for 50 mils? Yes, I think it would have a place in the collection, but honestly, for me, I'm just at the point where I would just wear this. I mean, I would wear Z14 happily, or I would wear uh, Vendetta by Valentino, and, and I would just use my juice and enjoy what I have and be grateful that I have it, and that's just sort of where I'm at in my journey. I wouldn't go spend the money on Italian Cypress, but I am very grateful to get to know it and wear it and do the video for you guys. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not one of those hype beast, uh, Tom Fords that, that people go crazy over. Um, but there are some people that think it's just absolutely one of the greatest fragrances of all time. And, you know, for me, the composition is just so similar to Z14 and Vendetta Porom that I just, I wouldn't go pay crazy prices for this. If you've never smelled it before, definitely do not blind buy this at insane prices on eBay or something like that. Make sure that you, um get a chance to sniff this first. So thank you very much to everyone who's watched. Uh, if you have ever smelled Italian Cypress, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Tom Ford sort of discontinuing stuff continuously. And sometimes they bring them back, sometimes they don't. I'd love for them to bring some of these fragrances back so more people can smell them without having to, you know, spend the insane money on eBay or something like that on, on the secondary market nowadays. I'd love for them to bring back something like Moss Brex, for example. Um, but Italian Cypress is, is definitely a good one, and I'll review Moss Brex one of these days. I've got more Tom Ford private blends that are discontinued that I plan on reviewing very soon, but uh, this is courtesy of Anuj, so I wanted to make sure I knocked this out. Very, very generous of him, very kind. I've really enjoyed the fragrances he sent me, like um, Replay, for example, is absolutely amazing. That really took me by surprise. The Elaine Delon fragrance for women that he sent me. Um, this one right here. Also, really shockingly good, this uh, Le Temps de Ames, I believe it is. Sorry, the light from the window is coming in over here, and the sun's starting to go down, so I'm not getting the best lighting right now. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, th this is beautiful. There's so many amazing fragrances he sent me from the last haul. I cannot wait to talk about on the channel. But if you've had a chance to um, smell Italian Cypress, do leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I love seeing your faces down below. Love seeing your faces in the comments. Uh, we're still small enough where I can respond to every single comment that's left. You know, it may take me a little bit, but uh, I do get back to each and every one of you still. So please leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, and thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, guys. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.